Good morning, friends. Welcome to this Sunday morning. It is the Lord's Day. We are still struggling with the pandemic. And let's begin this morning with prayer. Our Father, we feel burdened for our nation and we feel burdened with responsibility for a virus over which we have no control. We pray, Lord, that you would remind us and urge us to keep doing all we can to prevent the spread of the coronavirus, COVID-19. We ask, Lord, your blessing on this day. We ask your protection and blessing everywhere people will gather today. We thank you for the families that you have brought together to worship you. And we pray, Lord, that in this time, everyone would be watchful for one another and careful in their actions and in their words. We thank you for the day and we ask that you will allow us to spend it well in your presence. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. I'm so glad to be able to record the sermon before uh, I leave so that those of you who are having problems with the live feed from Drakesboro will uh, not be uh, too Well, my hope is that you will not feel isolated and separated from the things that can feed and help us through this time. Let me begin with the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The gospel lesson this morning is taken from Mark, the first chapter, verses 4 through 11. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins and they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Today, I'm inviting you to combine the recognition of epiphany and the baptism of Jesus into one event. 
it might seem like too much for one preacher, but I think it works. It might seem like we are not giving enough attention to the usual epiphany observation, and yet it seems as though this year, this is one where we need the light of Christ to resonate within our human experience most concretely. We need to find that light within as well as outside our experience. We need to remember that Christ works in us as well as beyond us. If this day is about anything, it is about the response of the church and the individuals within it to respond to that light and walk the path of Jesus each and every day. Besides, we are taking our cues from the Gospel of Mark. There are no magi in Mark's story, no star guiding their path. There are no dancing angels singing a proclamation of the coming of the one for whom all creation waits. The story begins with John and a river, then the tearing of heaven as everything gets remade and a dove descends. If anyone combines and packs together and overweights meanings and symbols and, move and, and moments, it's Mark. And yes, this is the year of Mark. So catch your breath now because once Mark gets going, there's no stopping until Holy Week anyway. Mark's gospel is fast paced through the story of Jesus. And as we are often left panting on the roadside, wondering what is going on, even this story, the baptism of Jesus, seems more concerned with meeting a flight schedule somewhere than with telling the story. Notice that there is nothing here about John's preaching that we get from Matthew and Luke. There is nothing about the conversation between Jesus and John that appears in the Gospel of John. Just in and out, get that baptism done, there's no actual description of the baptism at all. Did you notice that? He came to be baptized. Then, as he was coming up out of the water, he saw what we, what, what he saw. He saw what he saw. <laughs> it's like we skipped over the event itself. And given how much we argue about the methodology of baptism, you would think, that there would be some more detail here. It's almost as if the real importance is what happened afterward. Do you remember your baptism? Some do. Those who were baptized as youth or adults, many don't because it happened before their rememberers kicked in. Yet even those of us who remember our baptism only because someone told us about it much later, we can still remember what happened afterward because now is afterward. The life we live as baptized followers of Jesus is that afterward. The new creation that we choose to make of ourselves every single day of our lives is that afterward. And the new creation that we are and are becoming is a curious mixture of word and spirit. There are words pronounced over us at our baptism and there is spirit conferred from the community of faith. Sorry. And we are remade, a new creation, a fresh start. So we need reminders. Of course we need reminders of our baptism. It is too much 
of an event to keep in our hearts all the time. We forget what a transformative moment baptism is. We forget that everything old is torn away like the heavens were torn open, as Mark says. We forget that our orientation is from that moment our new life is claimed in that moment. We forget that what we are looking for, looking for is already ours in that moment. We lose our grip. We forget it even happened. We are still running. We are still looking for what we already have. Let me say that again. We forget that our orientation is from that moment forward. Our new life is claimed in that moment. We forget that what we are looking for, what we long for, is already ours in that moment. We lose our grip. We forget it even happened. We are still running. We are still looking for what we already have. Remember your baptism. It isn't just an empty ritual for Sunday mornings. It is a way of keeping or of living, a way of living that keeps our eyes open for the descending dove of the Spirit. It's a choice that we can claim to embrace the possibilities in front of us instead of the doubts within us. It's an opportunity to know that we are loved and claimed and that whatever darkness is hiding away in our past or our hearts need not define us anymore. It is a family we've entered into who will run with us as we search for what we are looking for and who will avoid saying, told you so, when we realize what we are looking for has been with us all the time. The tearing continues. The remaking continues. Our lives are constantly being taken apart and put back together. And whether we see it descending upon us like a dove or not, the Spirit is a constant companion throughout our lives. It is what inspires us to love and serve and learn and grow. It is what equips us to be a part of the body of Christ in unique and powerful ways. It is what tears us open to new ways of living, new ways of being. And whether we hear it or not, the word that is spoken over us is a word of affirmation. God sees the light placed within us and pronounces it good. The voice proclaims, you are my beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Maybe not done yet, not complete, not perfect, but you have pleased God. In God's eyes, you belong to him. You are his beloved child, adopted into his family. And now let's turn to the baptismal covenant. It's covenant number four. It's in our hymnals on page uh, 50. And it is the congregational reaffirmation of the baptismal vow. So I invite you to join me. I, I know that you may not have a copy to look on, and I didn't have time to get one prepared, so uh, I can't share that with you. But what I would like to do is, is go through that liturgy for us. 
and I'll have to look up my hymnal. I will be right back. All right. Here is the beginning of that baptismal covenant, a congregational reaffirmation of baptism and of their baptismal covenant. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge that God is doing for us, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. On behalf of the whole congregation, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent? of your sins. I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord? in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. I do. According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? I will. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of of God the Father, and will come again to join, to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We will have some water, whether it's a, a pitcher or a cup, I don't know. But we'll pour that water in our baptismal font and we'll pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. 
he called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all people. Pour out your Holy Spirit, and by this gift of water, call to our remembrance the grace declared to us in our baptism. For you have washed away our sins, and you clothe us with righteousness throughout our lives, that dying and rising with Christ, we may share in his final victory. All praise to you, Eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. This is the reaffirmation of faith. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. The Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. And the thanksgiving, let us rejoice in the faithfulness of our covenant God. We give thanks for all that God has already given us as members of the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we will faithfully participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. That in everything, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. That the God of all grace, who has called us, to eternal glory in Christ, establish and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. As we dismiss this morning, let me ask that blessing over you. May the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, Establish and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. May God bless your day, dear friends, and may you continue in an attitude of worship throughout the rest of this day and even the rest of this week. I pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh,